Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday morning, the first trading day of August. In the pre-market this morning, stock index futures are below fair value, as are commodities. So, so far, it looks like we are going to see some selling at the open on Tuesday morning. Looking at the iShares for the TSX 60, of course, we ended uh, July on a very positive note up at the top of the range. Uh, if we look at the distance between the previous peaks, uh, you can see that we are in, at the time and place where we should be looking for a pullback. Uh, if we look at the previous tops, they did uh, take several weeks to form. So uh, it is possible that uh, the market could hold on for another week or two, and then we wouldn't be surprised to see a sell-off into the month of September. Looking at uh, the right side chart for the iShares for the TSX 60, you can see the big dip we had on Thursday with that uh, news from the Bank of Japan, but the market recovered fairly well and we moved back up. Remember our magic number up here is 31.25. We closed just above that at 31.39. And again, we're looking for a pullback at the open on Tuesday morning. Well, we also saw the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ all end the month of August on a positive note. The NASDAQ looks like it is uh, uh, set up for the first index to give us a sell signal. That, of course, has not happened yet, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if the NASDAQ started to lead the market lower over the next few days. Next up, let's uh, take a look at the fear index. And uh, as I mentioned over the weekend, the VIX has been in a tight trading range for the last couple of months. So the market is uh, very comfortable down here at this range. And so a little move on the, our daily right side chart probably isn't going to spook them that much as it would have previously. Uh, so last week we had uh, the big move up on Thursday, pull back on Friday, and Monday was uh, neutral as we were trading in the channel. For the market to really notice what options traders are doing, we really need a breakout above the top of the flypaper channel, which is currently at around $17. So uh, that's probably what it's going to take to really spook the market. Otherwise, uh, everybody's just too overconfident down at these levels. Moving on to commodity prices, we saw copper continue to move higher on Monday, and of course that is uh, very supportive for a lot of Canadian mining stocks. Uh, gold, on the other hand, was up yesterday. It's down uh, $10 or so uh, last time I checked in the pre-market. So gold not uh, seeing fall through to the upside. That's also true for the price of silver. Now crude oil, on the other hand, has seen fall through to the upside and is uh, heading up towards the top of our projected trading range on the daily charts. Of course, we have higher targets on the weekly charts if we can take out 81.25. And of course, if we take out 81.25 and hold those levels above that, we will come up with new uh, price projections for the price of crude oil. Natural gas, on the other hand, just treading water here in the channel, still on a sell signal. Looking at the, the price of wheat, uh, we had the big run up on uh, news out of uh, Ukraine and Russia, and it uh, looks like we put in a double top here, and now we've come down over the past couple of days, and we're back on a sell signal. Looking at the price of lumber, no joy here, still on a sell signal, nothing good happening in, in the world of lumber, lower highs and lower lows. The best performing sector on the TSX from Monday's trading action was the energy sector. And so looking at the Stockhouse bull boards, here are the top stocks that uh, they are following on the bull boards, starting off with Baytex making a new high yesterday before pulling back and closing unchanged on the day. If you had an order in at 547, congratulations, that got filled. Uh, we did make a higher high there, but did not hold it. And uh, if we can take out yesterday's high, then I wouldn't be surprised to see a move up to 586. Then looking at uh, Athabasca, we are back on a sell signal as of Thursday's close. We traded through the upper channel line yesterday, but did not hold it. So we're looking for a close on Tuesday above $3.46. Then looking at uh, Suncor, making a new high for this move, breaking out above our price target of 4063. Now we're looking for a move up to 4219. You can see we peaked just below that back in late April. If we can uh, continue to move higher from there, then 4375 comes into play. I always ask you to look to the left to see if that's a realistic target. And you can certainly see that back in April, we were up at those levels. And then looking at Crescent Point, we're still well above the upper channel line, so I'm not concerned about a sell signal on Tuesday. 
Next up, let's uh, take a look at the most popular industrials from the bull boards and uh, starting off with the uh, pyrogenesis. Uh, this stock has been broken for a while. Uh, you can see there was a low risk buying opportunity there. We moved up, put in a lower high, which of course is a warning. There's the early warning signal going off. And as we came back down, we were looking for a cycle low right here in the middle of April. That didn't happen and we continued to move lower. And so then in late May, we put in a lower high and came back down. Now we've put in a lower low. So this is a very bearish chart. Of course, that could change at any time. We traded up to the 100-day moving average yesterday. We traded into the flypaper channel. Now we're looking to see if we can break out of the flypaper channel. Uh, two big uh, up days. Uh, so we're on our second day of a buy signal here. Our first price target was 98 cents. We traded through that yesterday, but we closed right at 98 cents. If we can continue to move higher and take out yesterday's high, then 107 and 117 certainly come into play. Looking at Bombardier, we're up uh, trading just below the highs from back in June. If we can take those out, then 68.75 and 71.88 come into play. Looking down, of course, so we're well above the upper channel line, so not concerned about a possible sell signal on Tuesday. Looking at X-Row, not much going on here at the moment. Uh, we have made a couple of higher lows, and we recently made a higher high for this move. So we're just looking at this area here. Uh, we traded through the upper channel line yesterday. A close on Tuesday above $2.28 would give us a buy signal and then 254 and 273 would come into play. Now something happened to this stock in early May up till that point. Uh, investors were willing to buy the dips and then that started to uh, fall apart and we have not seen aggressive selling here. So uh, you know the stock is uh, definitely worth two dollars. Nobody wants to uh, sell it below two dollars but what we're waiting for is some of these people to come back and buy the dip uh, so that we can get uh, back on track and, and start heading up towards $3 once again. Uh, that has not started yet, but it may start at any time. Then looking at Extract 1, we're looking to see if support holds here at uh, 78 cents. We closed at 80 cents yesterday. If we continue lower than 68 cents is our next target to the downside. Looking up on Tuesday, if things turn around on Tuesday, a close above 86 cents would give us a new buy signal. Then looking at Air Canada, coming off the top of the panic zones, early warning signal went off. We're starting to move down. We're on a sell signal. Uh, if the bullish story for Air Canada is going to stay intact, we need the uh, stock to uh, trade down and hold the flypaper channel, which is currently at uh, $22 to $23, but moving higher daily. So that's where we would expect to find support. If we don't find support there, then that uh, opens up a, a new chapter for Air Canada at this time. Let's uh, finish off looking at crypto stocks. And we still have uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum on sell signals, but uh, crypto stocks came back on Monday and you can see Bitfarm sitting right on the upper channel line. So any higher close would give us a buy signal on Tuesday. Uh, Galaxy traded up to the upper channel line yesterday, so a close above yesterday's high would give us a buy signal. For Hive, we're looking for a close on Tuesday above $7.37. And our last stock this morning, Hut 8, uh, looking for a close on Tuesday above $4.92 to give us a new daily buy signal. If that doesn't happen, of course, that upper channel line is going to continue to move lower daily. Okay, folks, that is all for this morning's presentation. Now, since I started the presentation, it looks like stock index futures and commodities have come down a bit. We do have uh, gold currently trading down $16. Uh, the Dow is down 85. So uh, we are looking for some selling at the open on Tuesday morning. Have a great day, folks. Next time you'll hear my voice is on Wednesday morning.